What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a very hot minute since I've posted one and I'm sorry about that, but as you guys all know, the world is kind of crazy right now. But I've been super busy even before all this world shutdown started to happen and I want to explain first kind of where I am, give you an update with my dental school journey, and then we're gonna move on to the topic of this video exactly how um, this whole worldwide crisis, epidemic, uh, COVID-19 situation is affecting and will affect in the future uh, dental students. And I don't know, I wish I knew how this was um, kind of going down nationwide across, across all the dental schools um, in the United States, but I don't. I only know what's happening at OSU. So that is going to be the information that you guys get, what exactly is happening here in Columbus at OSU. So let's get on to a little update about where I've been. So back in August, I think I've talked to you in the in the last video, last August I was studying for a really big um, test, basically medical, uh, step one of medical school boards. I took that in August and I had studied all summer months, dedicated everything that I could to it, got a score that was okay um, I could have applied but it wouldn't have been something that stood out on my application so it's since it's offered twice a year once in August and once in February I took it again just a few months ago um, this year in February and I did a lot better I improved my score exactly how much I wanted to and I really think when I when it comes time to uh, submitting my application that's going to be something that oral surgery programs can look at and see as a huge positive for me. And I started studying for that probably around the end of October of, of last year. So it was a grind. I gave up a lot of my Christmas break. I was studying six to seven hours um, at home in Florida when my family was there, my friends were around, and all I wanted to do was play golf and go swimming, but I couldn't and it paid off. Now, outside of studying for that, I've also been in clinic for almost a year, which is really scary to say. Awesome at the same time, but I'm 50% of the way done with my clinical training uh, in dental school, which like it's it's awesome because I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I have one year left until I either you know go to private practice or get into a residency program, which is awesome. I'd love to start making money instead of paying uh, tens of thousands of dollars in tuition but at the same time I have so much to learn it's unbelievable um, there's a lot of procedures common procedures that I haven't even done yet and I have a year to learn how to do them and that's scary it's really scary but I have faith in the the faculty faith faith in the system that you know all the every year a whole class of d4s graduate and I'm gonna be in the same same boat next year and I will know what I need to know at least enough to survive once school is over. And besides that, I'm going to have my oral surgery application ready to submit in kind of the middle to or end of this upcoming summer. So the only thing that I have left to do is, well, I actually have a lot left to do. I need to get letters of recommendation. I need to redo my personal statement from when I applied to dental school. I'm kind of just using that one as a base. I'm going to revamp it and do a couple more drafts um, and make all the changes I need to make. And then I need to have a couple of externships on my application, which I've only completed one so far, which is where I go spend a week at uh, an oral surgery program at a, at a different school. So a few, about a, a few weeks ago, I was actually at the University of Iowa, loved it. Uh, their program just blew it out of the water. I think the faculty is great. The experiences that I got there with the uh, with the residents watching them do these huge complicated almost risky procedures is amazing that I might have the opportunity to learn how to do those same things and so I cannot be more excited for getting into residency applying the whole process I think it's awesome now let's get into the whole point of this video which is trying to explain to you guys what exactly is going on with the COVID-19 situation and dental school. But before we get started, I have here pulled up a uh, COVID-19 YouTube video because you know I'm obviously in the healthcare profession and most of you guys are too. I think it is really important that we kind of understand what is going on when something um, this huge happens that affects the whole entire world on a on a scientific level. So this isn't any medical advice, so that's you know a huge disclaimer, but 
Ninja Nerd Science is a YouTube channel that I watched a lot for studying for that big medical test I took, the CBSE, and just regular dental school classes. He does a special video on the coronavirus, the epidemiology, kind of how you go about diagnosing the tests, everything from why it infects as many people as it does and how fast and actually how uh, kind of the mechanism of action that it does damage to your lungs and how that can ultimately lead to multi-system organ failure. I think it's important for every medical care professional to understand exactly what's going on, how to prevent it and all that. So anyways, I think he does a really good job. I'll throw that link down in the description below. Um, go check it out if you guys have some extra time while you're being quarantined. So now on to how this whole situation is going to affect dental students. Um, it, it is honestly going to affect us in a huge way, which is, is pretty scary. I'm glad that I'm in my third year and not in my fourth year because I really really don't know what they're gonna do for the students that are about to graduate in like, I and basically at the end of April, um, at the end of this upcoming month, all of the D4s that are currently at OSU are supposed to be graduating. And a lot of them were just finishing up their requirements. A few of them had a few more requirements to get done. And I honestly don't know what they're going to do. They haven't said exactly uh, whether they are going to just completely waive those requirements and just say you guys have got the training that you've got we're in kind of a crisis emergency situation so there's nothing we can do um, we'll let you guys graduate and hopefully you can have good mentors when you get out which you know it sounds risky but um, this is something that's totally out of our hands as students you know what can we do the other uh, well one other option is that once we can go back and start seeing patients that they they come back as well and finish up their requirements and once you're done then you can finally graduate and get your uh, dental license but we haven't received any email saying specifically what OSU is going to do. And that's the thing is I understand why they can't say what we're gonna do because we don't know how long the shutdown is gonna last. In, in Columbus specifically, the type of patients that we see in our dental clinic are often the patients that are most at risk to getting severe infections. And you know, if I'm doing a filling on one of my patients that's let's say 70 years old and they happen to be infected with a virus, you know, my high speed drill is flinging particles everywhere. And I I have a mask on, but you know, there's a cubicle right next to me. There's four cubicles that are, you know, within um, a few feet of me. And so having those go in the air, patients walking by, doctors walking by, other students walking by that might not have um, the proper PPE on, it just it creates an environment where spread is inevitable and it can happen like that to a lot of patients who are who really need to be careful because of you know their age or they have other a lot of other systemic problems going on that has weakened their immune system it just doesn't seem like um, bringing in all of a ton, you know, it can be up to a hundred patients at a time into one building seems like a smart idea. So I don't know when we are going to be able to um, open up clinic again. As of yesterday, I believe they sent out an email saying that for sure clinic is canceled all the way through the end of April. So that's as far as we know now. It very well could be uh, past that because, um, you know, the goal right now is everyone's heard we were trying to flatten the curve. And so we don't know. All this quarantining is flattening the curve, but, you know, the x axis on that graph is going to be time. And if we flatten that curve, it's going to take up a lot more time, which is interesting to think about what kind of effects that has not only for you know dental students obviously that's my world right now but also for um for the economy for for jobs for the whole world um as a whole so this it we are definitely living in a very unique time and ideally we can get back on track as soon as possible but be smart about it and uh, not cause any further damage. We don't want our hospitals to be overwhelmed. And because OSU's dental um, clinic is connected to, directly connected to the huge Wexner Hospital Center in, at OSU, 
it just causes a lot of problems for us. One thing that we do know though is how we're going to be dealing with online classes and that is for the rest of the semester uh, because it's not good to have groups of people get together uh, over 10 basically. All of our classes are online. So our finals, which are still gonna happen at the end of this month, probably that last week of April, those are gonna all be online. All of our lecture material has been released to us, whether that's just PowerPoints or some teachers are going above and beyond and just recording themselves and sending that out. And ideally that won't be that big of a change. I know I've been used to watching recorded lectures for a while, ever since my first year of dental school. So I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal. One of the biggest questions I guess I have is what they, and I don't have an answer for this. So if you guys know, if your school has already announced something or in the future announces something, put it down below how your dental school or program is dealing with the grades of the current students. So uh, I know for our, our clinic grades, it was supposed to be kind of on an ABC uh, fail scale, but now because we're missing over, you know, at the end of this, I think it'll be close to a month and a half, a little bit over that of patient time. And so I don't know if they're going to drop the requirements that we need to get an A or if they're going to switch it all to pass fail, which I think that would almost be more beneficial because I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of um, of things that you need to consider when talking about clinic grades. It could really hurt a student that has worked really hard, had a lot of big procedures coming up um, towards the end of the semester, but now they can't see those patients because we're locked out of clinic. It just seems like grading everyone based off of what they got done when they thought they had a lot more time to accomplish. Uh, enough procedures to get a certain grade in clinic. I just think that s seems unfair in a way, but um, that's just my opinion. And so if they could go to a pass fail, I honestly think that would be the best, but I have no idea. Uh, I know the, the university is kicking around a million different ideas. They're taking input from the students, from the faculty, and so that'll be probably one of the most interesting things that I'm gonna be paying attention to how the whole grade thing is gonna shake down. And then because we because my class still has a whole year left are they going to keep our total graduation requirements the same so like do i still need to do seven arches of dentures or do i still need to do 10 crowns um i don't know if they're going to drop that number because we've been held out of clinic for you know a month and a half which is not it's shorter than than all the other classes or are they going to expect us to stay around the school and be in clinic over a uh, break period? So Christmas break, we could probably uh, make up three weeks if we needed to. I know we have kind of a bigger break, almost some, probably another three weeks in August. I don't know if they're going to expect us because it's extreme circumstances to sacrifice our break and stay in school to get those done or if they're going to drop them. It, uh, we don't, I'm not even, I'm sure we're not even close to deciding what that is going to be because we don't even know if at the end, at the end of April we can 100% open up our clinics again. So we are in a period of a lot of unknowns, which is unfortunate, but that's what uh, that's what we have. So we're going to make the best of it. Other than that, I think we we just have to wait this out and hopefully everyone um, watching this is staying safe at home. If you guys have any questions about upcoming videos that you want me to do, put them down below. I'd love to take any suggestions. We can start talking about a lot of topics that you guys are interested in. But that's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next one.